Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my office transformation. This is a complete transformation. I'm gonna take you through the whole process, building an accent wall, all of the redecorating, all of the new furniture, building furniture. There is so much in today's video. That is why it is so long. This is a super extensive look at the entire process of us making over our office. I can't wait to hear all of your guys' thoughts. We have a ton to do, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Be thinking like Katie you just did this room and that's true but when we did the office we were also doing the dining room the loft upstairs and the nursery so the office just kind of got you know whatever we had already so this basket wall we had in our master bedroom in our previous apartment um, these frames we had in the hallway of our previous apartment we just changed out the artwork put the basket wall here because we needed something big that would fill up the wall and then for these these were three, they're three separate pieces from Ikea. They were really affordable and they were actually white when I got them. And when they got delivered, I just decided that like I hated the white. So I got out a gallon of paint and actually like painted these myself. And honestly, they have served us well. They hold Brian's books, our printer fits inside, but because it's black paint, this has just been like continuously chipping off because I didn't prime it, I didn't sand it. I was like eight months pregnant and was just like, I'm gonna paint these because I don't like the way they look. It was like very spur of the moment and all of the paint is starting to chip off. Like seriously, if I pick up one of these items, there's like a solid chance that like if it's been here long enough, like paint's gonna come with it. Like it kind of sticks. I don't know if you guys can hear that like sticking sound, but everything just sticks to this. So this has served us well. Honestly, just gonna put it out on the curb, like all three of them and someone can come take them for free if they want them. They have served us well, but they just, they don't spark joy. So I'm really excited to bring in a piece of furniture that I know will. This is the sideboard of my dreams. I wanted this piece of furniture for so long. My friend actually has it in her house. It was out of stock for several months, but I've just admired it at her house for the last like five or six months. And finally it was coming back into stock. So I just knew I had to pull the trigger. This is a forever piece of furniture. No matter what house we live in, there will be a spot for this because truly it will match with literally any style. And I could not be more excited to finally have her and one of our own. Just so in love. It's so beautiful it was pretty expensive so I didn't want to pay for the delivery where they like unwrap it and take all the you know boxing away I knew it was gonna come like fully assembled so I figured I could just take it out of the box myself and save myself the $250 for the white glove delivery comment down below if you're the same like if you're already spending a lot do you just pull the trigger and do the delivery or does that hinder you from you know spending the extra money I was so thrilled it's so gorgeous I knew it was already gonna come put together and I couldn't wait to get it into place So I went ahead and emptied out all of these shelves and then Brian and I moved them out and moved our new beauty to her home Is officially accent wall day and this is the true focal point of the room it's gonna turn this office from builder grade to custom made and it's so wild how big of a difference it makes with the accent wall we actually have unlocked another new character we have our friend Ross over today to help us show us the ropes and he also has done these accent walls a ton in his house if you've been watching for like three plus years you will remember our old apartment Ross was actually our neighbor so that's how we met him he bought 
bought a house and he does these accent walls all over his house and posts about them on Facebook. So I asked him if he would be willing to come over and show us the ropes and help us achieve this really nice wall. And he was super excited because it's a design he hasn't done before. But it was so fun to just learn from him and see how these accent walls come together. Because with a lot of these accent walls, I feel like they look a lot harder to achieve than they really are. And I'm really excited to take you through the entire process today. I don't show my standing desk and walking pad again in the video until way later, but this is actually the corner that they are going to live in from now on. There's this little wall that's tucked behind our front door and it's perfect for the standing desk. I love that you can't see it right when you walk in, but I'm still able to keep them in the space because they are two items that are super important to me. The office makeover is truly for Brian. He is the one that works in the space day in and day out. So I'm really grateful that my desk and walking pad still fit in the room and that we can still work side by side but truly this office makeover is for him and I know that he is so grateful and loves the space just as much as I do. All right, so they're over there doing a bunch of math. I'll put this like grid accent wall calculator that they are using to find the dimensions. We're not wanting to do perfect squares. We're kind of wanting to do like slight rectangles. So just trying to figure out all of the math so they know exactly what to buy when they go to Lowe's. While they're at Lowe's, I'm gonna work on taking down all of these baskets. We're not gonna have the basket wall anymore. So I'm gonna work on that while they're gone, fill those holes, wait for that to dry, sand, probably do the texture and then paint over it. So that should be pretty easy, but I do want to fill all the holes and make sure that that wall is looking super nice because I think we're just going to have this one big piece of artwork on there. I might end up purchasing a different piece, but I think that this one's going to work fine for now, but got to get those baskets down. They're working on the math, and when they get back, it is game time. I feel lost late at night in the dark, at least when I Ross really wanted to map it out on the wall so that we could see it, which I loved because I'm a super visual person. And I'm glad that we did that because I feel like originally the rectangles were a little bit too big. And we wanted to figure out exactly how large we wanted them. That way they knew how much wood to buy. You know, it's all part of that math that I was talking about them doing earlier. But I'm really glad that we mapped it all out. We did decide that we were going to have four across and four down and that was perfect for the wall so they were off to Lowe's and now I'm going to be taking down all of the baskets I actually asked on Instagram and I feel like I got a super mixed response like some people love the baskets some people hate them I really like them I loved them in our apartment I had them like surrounding our TV and I thought it looked super cute when my style was more like modern boho but they just don't fit the you know aesthetic of the new office space and I just feel like they're a little bit busy especially because we're gonna have our accent wall so goodbye to the baskets and hello to the spackle I needed to fill in all of these holes I'm just using the spackle that dries white it goes on pink dries white super easy that way you know when it is dry and ready to sand but I feel You can totally use tools to apply the spackle. I just prefer to use my fingers, especially when I'm just filling in like small nail holes. This is seriously so easy to do. You just fill in the hole. I like to overfill it because then you just sand it down. And in Florida, we do have orange peel textured walls and they sell the orange peel spray. So if you really want the wall to look completely perfect, like nothing was ever there, I recommend doing the spackle, sanding, then putting on the orange peel, letting all of that dry and then painting. And you will never know that any of these holes were there.
All right, back from Lowe's and they picked up primed two by four by 12s. We wanted the longest boards we could get. That way we had the fewest amount of cuts possible for the bottom and the top. We are gonna go in and fill in everything with wood filler once the entire wall is done. That's part of the finishing work. But if you can have the fewest amount of long cuts possible, it just makes the wall look more professional. So they did pick up the two by four by 12s. Don't ask me how I got them home. I have no idea. I think they might've put them through the sunroof. We really need a truck. That's what we've learned throughout all of our home projects is that we absolutely need a truck. started off the accent wall by framing it in so we put the boards on the top the bottom and the sides we are using a table saw to cut the wood and then a brad nailer to nail them into the wall we're not using any glue or anything the nails work perfectly fine while they work on making all of the middle cuts i did decide to go ahead and sand the wall that i worked on while they were gone honestly the spackle dries pretty quickly especially when you're just filling smaller holes but like i said before it goes on pink and dries white so you know when it is ready to go This is one of those projects where you need to measure a hundred times and only cut once. Ross did say though when he's buying the wood, once he figures out how much he needs for any given projects, he likes to account for like 10% extra. So maybe just buying one extra board just in case you make an incorrect cut. Luckily with the pattern that we chose, we did make one incorrect cut on the side that I didn't show in this video. I didn't get it on camera, but we accidentally cut it too short because we were messing around and we got the numbers mixed up but that could be used for all of the middle boards. So luckily our pattern that we chose is pretty forgiving, but you definitely want to measure once and cut a million times. Ross also had this really cool laser that measures the wall and all of the different widths. And I just thought all of his little tools were so cool. We need a truck, we need one of those. We also need a table saw. And here we are cutting out the outlet. We are just using, I believe this is called a multi-tool and it's used for so many different things. It's used for multiple things. That's why they call it a multi-tool. There are definitely other ways that you can cut out an outlet, but our wall happened to go over it and we just found that this was the easiest way. The whole time we were working on the accent wall, Ross just kept saying how much easier it was having an extra set of hands around. Brian and I, in so many shots, like more than I even realized, it did take all three of us, like two people would be holding the boards or one person would have the brad nailer, someone would have a level, the other person would be holding the board in place. So if you have extra hands around and you work well together, I definitely think that that helped the project go by a little bit faster. It took, I would say like seven or eight hours from start to finish, like measuring to putting the final coat of paint on the wall. And I feel like that's not bad. Here is everything done, like all of the wood in place. Like I mentioned a couple times, we did use a brad nailer, so we do need to go in with wood filler and fill in all of the holes. In my mind, I'm thinking you could potentially do this renter friendly if you're not able to like leave your projects in place and maybe you could attach the boards with like the command hook like velcro system potentially maybe if you used wood that is a little bit lighter i'm just in my head trying to think of ways that you could potentially make this renter friendly but now all three of us are going in with the wood filler first doing all of the holes and then all of the seams where all of the boards meet we are filling in those as well because we want this to be as perfect as possible
Wood filler is very similar to spackle in the sense that it goes on a pink color and dries this brown color and you want to overfill all of the holes and seams so that you can sand them down to exactly how you want them to be. So you just sometimes have to put a lot on that way you can sand it all down. I wanted to show you guys exactly what it's going to look like. Like you can see definitely looks not so great right now but with a little bit of sanding and a whole bunch of paint and some elbow grease it's going to look amazing all this finishing work is very very tedious and it's definitely not my favorite part of the project while i'm doing it but it makes such a difference if you put in the time and effort to do these small details they are truly what make all the difference in your project coming out exactly how you see them on pinterest have noticed my Taylor Swift jersey shirt that is like Kansas City Chiefs colors it was actually Super Bowl Sunday the day that we were working on this accent wall that's why Brian is a little bit in and out now with all of the finishing stuff because the game had started and I can totally tackle this part by myself but don't come for me with my shirt I actually went to school in Missouri I went to college in Missouri so I am allowed to wear a Kansas City Chiefs shirt and I think that their love like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift is adorable just let people be happy you know it doesn't kill you to let other people be happy i think it's adorable and i actually love seeing her like have an opportunity to be almost a normal person i feel like she was so mysterious for so many years and i just love that they're loving each other so loudly i feel like we need more of that in the world so that is my little rant on that but anyways right here i'm just cleaning off all of the dust all of the sanding of the wood filler makes such a big mess so i'm really wiping down all the surfaces vacuuming it all up before i break out any of my paint supplies I have two stick vacuums. One is more expensive, one is more affordable, but they both have this really nice light on the front that just like illuminates any particles that are on the floor, whether it be pet hair or wood filler dust, whatever it may be. It just illuminates it so that like you know exactly where to vacuum over and make sure that you get it all up. So if you're in the market for a stick vacuum, make sure it has that feature. I will list and link both of the vacuums I have down below. They're both available on Amazon. Like I said, one is a bit more more expensive one is always a little bit cheaper and has a coupon be sure to check them out down below I highly recommend both of them I was super excited to finally be at the painting step of the process. A lot of you might know this if you've seen some of my other home makeover videos, but I absolutely love to paint. It is just so satisfying. I feel like it is one of those things that you just get instant gratification, especially when you're painting over an old paint color, or in this case, I'm painting over like all the wood filler and the primed boards and just really making the entire wall look super cohesive. For now, we did just decide to paint the accent wall the same color as the rest of the house. House. but in the future I think that we might consider painting it maybe a more fun color like a green or a darker beige or something like that but for now we just wanted it to be super cohesive and we do love how our color just brightens up the space the color is Greek Villa by Sherwin Williams that is the color of our entire house and I know you guys have seen me paint a ton so I figured I would just do a fun little transition where you guys can see the wall fully painted and don't have to watch me do every brush stroke 
With the wall all painted now, the final step to make it look 100% professionally done is to caulk all of these small seams. From far away, you don't really notice them, but up close, I just feel like you want to caulk everything just to make it look 100% finished and polished. And you may be thinking, but Katie, don't you need to caulk before you paint? Because in the past, typically you would paint straight over it. But now, Sashko just came out with the exact color sealant. So this is actually a tintable caulk, so no matter what color you are using, you're going to be able to get an exact match what's really great about this is that even if you're doing a white color or something neutral like what I'm using or a black or teal or blue or green no matter what color your project is you are going to be able to tint it and get a perfect match and a perfect finish every time I really like the tintable caulk I love the idea of this because I've had some issues in the past with the paintable caulk cracking down the line like a month two months six months later and with this you're going to get a lot of flexibility and durability and avoid that cracking it may seem like a difficult process but it could not be easier all you do is suck up some of the paint up to 30 milliliters into the injector and put that straight into the caulking tube all you have to do is shake that for 60 seconds super rigorously to get it all mixed up it does come a little bit thinner than your typical sealant all you have to do from there is put in the thickener so it just comes with the thickener that you again shake up for 60 seconds leave for 30 minutes for it to thicken up and then you have a perfectly tinted caulk that is ready to go I went ahead and prepped three bottles of this just because we have to caulk a ton of seams there are 12 rectangles in total on the wall and then I also wanted to caulk all the way around so with that 30 minute hold time we decided to go ahead and pre prep three bottles that way we would be good to go but I have to say one bottle goes a super long way if you want to get your hands on the Sashko exact color sealant for your next DIY project you can head to Amazon Lowe's and it's also found at a ton of other local hardware stores I am obsessed with this product I know I'm gonna be reaching for it so much in my future projects we're gonna be doing a wall similar to this in our DIY master bedroom makeover that's gonna be coming out probably in the spring we're gonna be doing another really fun accent wall maybe in a different pattern and probably in a different color so this product is gonna be absolutely perfect for that My mom and I worked together to get this job done and it was honestly so fast and it was really satisfying. Caulking is a lot like painting, like it's one of those finishing things that seems tedious but it makes all the difference and it's extremely satisfying because you really do get instant results. I just absolutely love caulking so much. Just like you can see all the seams filling in and when I do the sides, like oh, it just makes such a difference. This is a step you do not want to skip. My mom and I did work together. I always feel like it's easier of course if you have two people because I would go around with the caulking gun and she was going around and just kind of making sure that it was perfectly in all of the seams and wiping away any excess they do say that teamwork makes the dream work and it definitely helped having an extra set of hands thank you so much to my mom for helping and thank you to Sashko for sponsoring today's video I could see the finish line. It was right there. I could not wait to get this wall fully done because I was just dying to decorate and just kind of finish off this space. And of course this accent wall, like it is the main focal point. So it had to be absolutely perfect and we could not rush it. But truthfully, I was getting so antsy and just so excited to have this wall done. just got here the desk just got delivered it 
is gorgeous. The drawer is soft clothes. How nice is that? And then there is a ton of storage. Like that goes all the way back. A ton, ton, ton of storage. I mean, it is a big, big desk. It's so nice. I'm obsessed with like the solid wood grain. It weighs like 250 pounds. This like fluted detailing on both sides and that goes all the way around. Oh my goodness. Final step is building this arch cabinet, which is what we're gonna do next. After having the other two large furniture pieces come fully assembled, this was really a slap in the face from reality. This is the viral, I think it's called the Juliet Arc display case from Walmart. I'll have it linked down below. It's been coming in and out of stock a ton and I was lucky enough to snag one. There is this Facebook group called the McGee & Co Design something. I don't know. I'll link it down below. But it is like if you love Studio McGee style or like modern organic, anything like that. And if you're looking for like designer dupes, you need to join this group on Facebook. I am absolutely obsessed with it and people are giving in-stock notifications over there. I actually had a woman message me every single time came back into stock and I missed it still like three times when I wasn't paying attention to my phone and she still kept telling me and finally I got one so go join the group over there it is such an amazing group of people and if we have similar styles you will absolutely love it It wasn't extremely hard to put together. I'd probably give it like a six or maybe a seven out of 10. Just obviously with like having a baby, everything is more time consuming. So we did have to take a couple breaks from putting it together for me to like feed her, for her naps, to go out and do errands. But I feel like it wasn't too, too difficult to put together. And for the price, I feel like it's a very like high end style for a really affordable price. It is like right at $400, I believe. And I think it is truly worth every penny. It is so perfect for the room. It has that like black wood look and then it's the honey color on the inside, which is so perfect, especially for the sideboard and the black desk. I just knew I had to get my hands on it and it is so perfect for the space. Of course, like also the arch cabinet with the oval desk. Oh my gosh, I just think it's chef's kiss. I am obsessed with all of it. always makes me chuckle just a little bit with pretty much anything you're gonna put together it always says not to use a drill and they'll give you like this little allen wrench or a tiny screwdriver to assemble a whole bookcase um i don't have all day people so i'm gonna be using a drill but thank you so much like look how many little screws were just on the back to attach the back of the bookshelf to what we had already built that would have taken 45 minutes if I hadn't used a drill, but with a drill and an extra set of hands from my mom, super quick. And also, I did leave you in these funny parts. Me and my mom, we argue like Lucy and Ethel. She is literally my best, best, best friend. And I can only hope and pray that Bryn and I have the exact same type of relationship that I have with my mom.
dragging the bookshelf on the blanket all the way to the office was my mom's idea and I think it was truly genius. At first we were considering putting the bookshelf on this wall. We do end up moving it. We just kind of turn it so that it's on the accent wall. But before we get into all that, we do have to attach the doors, which was by far the most annoying part of the entire process. Just because, you know, it takes a lot of adjusting so that the doors are placed perfectly. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the doors are still not placed perfectly but they're as good as it's gonna get, okay? So if you see in a later clip when I'm decorating the bookshelf that, you know, the handles are not even, mind your business. I am a person that is very easily startled and I absolutely get that from my mom. There were so many times throughout the week that, you know, Brian would be home and everyone would know he was home. My mom would turn around in the kitchen and just like gasp super loud and I was the exact same way. Here you just saw me kind of like walk off to go grab a flashlight. Brian came in and him and my mom just kind of took over and I happily let them but I did lend a helping light and a helping hand when they needed it. Like I said, this process honestly I cut it down a lot it, I think it also didn't help that we are three people with three opinions and three really strong personalities and so we all had a different idea of how it should go what direction we needed to turn the screws to make the doors go up down inwards outwards but eventually we figured it out With all of the big projects done, I could not hardly wait to get all the extra items out of the room and just start piecing everything back together. It's so fun to like just finally put it all back together and see the vision really come to life. So even though it was pretty late at night at this point, I did not care. I was grabbing everything because I just wanted to start putting all the pieces of the puzzle back together. I do have a new rug that I'm laying down in the office, so I again wanted to give the room a really good vacuum. I just went over it multiple times, that way I knew I was putting the rug down on a super clean floor. So I just went over this several times. Also, are any of you guys like me? I love to vacuum. I just feel like it's very, very satisfying. It's like my favorite household chore, but I will vacuum over the same room multiple times and like I said I have two stick vacuums so I'll go over it like two times with one vacuum and two times with another one just to see how much it gets up every time and I'm always equally disgusted annoyed and oddly satisfied Watching the footage back right now, I feel like I can already see the comments that some people are gonna think that the rug is too small. It's a five by seven. The desk is really, really large and they only make rugs in so many sizes. So the next option is a seven by 10 and that would have been way too big for the space. We think it looks perfect. I do also film on a fisheye lens so it looks a little bit different in person than it does in real life. And on the side of the console right here, I was doing this earlier and I didn't say what I was doing, but I'm filling 
putting in the like back part that we attached like that panel with Sharpie so that it's all black. With all of the major pieces in place and my little sidekick by my side, it is finally time to start decorating. I have so many little bits and pieces that I have picked up over the last week. I actually did a huge decor haul that I posted on my channel like a week and a half ago. So if you want to see where a lot of these items are from, you can go ahead and check out that video. I'll have it linked down below. I also did shop my own house for a lot of the decorations. I always think it's really fun to repurpose items that you already have and give them fresh life. So from our guest bedroom, I did take some items that that nobody ever really sees and now everyone gets to see them right when they come in. Here is an overview of a lot of the items I'm going to be pulling from when styling the shelves. Starting off with a piece of artwork. This is from Target. I did pick this up for the bookshelf specifically but I didn't have it for my haul because at the time that I filled the haul I had not yet scored the bookshelf so I waited until I was actually able to secure this purchase of the bookshelf before I got a lot of the small items but Target has a lot of really great artwork and I just think it's really pretty and adds a lot of depth and dimension to the shelves because they are so deep and you will see that I'm just trying so many different combinations just kind of going shelf by shelf and taking it super slow as well as closing the doors a lot because it is such a like thick black frame around the doors that I wanted to make sure that they didn't only look good with the doors open I also wanted to make sure they looked super nice with the doors closed I gotta be honest with you, I was so proud of how I styled these shelves. I just think they came together so beautifully. I grabbed these baskets from Target. They're from Hearth and Hand. They were not cheap, but I could not find the right size baskets at Home Goods. Of course, I always prefer to shop at Home Goods for baskets because they're so much more affordable, but I just needed this specific size, so I had to bite the bullet and buy the Hearth and Hand ones. But these were $40 a piece. I do just love, though, how they finish off the cabinet and they also give a little bit of hidden storage to this fully glass fronted display shelf. This sideboard is super large. I think it's like 86 inches long. It also weighs about 300 pounds. And I just knew I needed a lot of really large scale items to decorate it. Like that ribbed vase on the end is absolutely massive. And this sideboard just kind of like swallows items and shrinks them. So I knew I needed a lot of large items with a lot of presents just so that I don't know, I just didn't want to shrink the space and I wanted everything to look super proportionate. I did stick these stems. These are also from Target. They are from Hearth and Hand specifically in here just to add more greenery and I like how I have the greenery at one end as well as the other. And again, it just kind of adds to the proportionates of the space. And I already know so many of you guys are gonna absolutely hate this lamp. I actually already changed it out from when I filmed this video. I just got this like stoneware lamp that's gray that has a really nice big white shade and it looks a lot better on the space but for here I was just kind of trying to use what I already had and I wanted to tie in a little bit more gold so I'll just have to find another way to do that on this piece but don't worry I did already change the lamp I know that a lot of you guys are gonna say that it is too small and I agree
Obviously, I need to keep Brian's desk extremely functional, but that doesn't mean that I can't change out some of the less aesthetic items for some newer finds. I picked up this really cute desk organizer kit from Target. It's from Threshold. Just comes with these two little cups, one for like paper clips, the other one for pens. And then there's a ton of storage in the desk on the sides as well as a drawer. So he can still keep this item if he wants to. But for the top of the desk, I did want to make it a little bit more aesthetic. And can we just take a moment for the headset holder? I know it's extra, but it was a necessity. He wears a headset all day for his job, and I just thought that was so hilarious. I did also add these black wood coasters. He, of course, always has like a drink and coffee, and I had these in our bar cabinet. I bought them at Home Goods, I think, last year. I saved them apparently until now because they were absolutely perfect. And I did have to get the perpetual desk calendar, which Brian also absolutely loves. The next thing we needed to tackle was cord management. I will say this desk is absolutely perfect except for the fact that it doesn't have a cord hider and I was not willing to drill into the desk. Brian did ask and I laughed in his face like we are not drilling into this beautiful brand new desk so i went on to amazon where everybody goes and i found a bunch of different things for cord management the first one being this little shelf and that's where you can put like a power strip and then everything kind of like sits on top of there so we started with that and then i did find these kind of like mesh cord attachers so it kind of just makes a bunch of cords into like one nice very like contained cord set when you see the end result, is it 100% perfect? No, but it's definitely as good as it's going to get with the like desk non-cord hider situation and Brian needing as many monitors as he does. And lastly, we needed to hang up this piece of artwork. I really love it above this piece. I feel like maybe in the future I could get something that's a little bit bigger, but for now, something that we already had, which was this up in our bedroom, I got it on clearance at Target. It's same with thing with that plant in the corner. I had them up in our bedroom. These were clearance scores from Target that I got a couple months ago that did not have a home yet. I was planning on using them in our master bedroom, but honestly, they work perfect for this space, and I was excited to be able to save money where I could. We are using my favorite tape trick to hang this. You just use a piece of painter's tape and you mark off exactly where the holes are so you get it right every single time. All you have to do is make sure that it is level. Brian and I bickered back and forth about the height. I think that it should be a little bit lower. He likes where it is, but let me know what you guys think. I need think it needs to be moved down like maybe four inches. This is the final product, the finished office. I cannot be more in love with this space. I seriously find myself going over there multiple times a day just to kind of like admire it. It was such a transformation. I'm so proud of how it came out and I cannot wait to make over our master bedroom next. I hope you guys love it just as much as we do. I mean, look at this finished project. Well, all right, everybody, there you have it. That is the office makeover office transformation, full start to finish of the entire process. We are so obsessed with this space. There are a few small changes that we want to make, like I was talking about, like a new lamp and just maybe a few other things, like changing out some of the extension cords, but we are so happy with how this space came out and I hope that you guys love it as well. Brian is absolutely obsessed with it. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell. Thank you so much again to Sashko for sponsoring today's video. I love you guys all so much. Thank you for being here watching this video today and every day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Brian Joyce. 
I'm here to help you today with your insurance. I'm gonna save you money and get your grocery card. Can I just ask you, do you take any great medications? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>